Hi, this is a Thursday evening, July 30th update on Tropical Storm Isaias. As always, the thoughts in this video are just mine, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. We're tracking a much better defined storm today. This is the zoomed in visible shot of what is now the core of Tropical Storm Isaias, and this has really evolved overnight last night and today. Uh, as we kind of discussed yesterday where the center came up toward the Mona Passage and then may have moved over the tip of the Dominican Republic and is now evident near the northern coast of the Dominican Republic really paralleling that northern coastline and uh, is likely uh, deepening as we go through the day. By deepening I mean intensifying. We've had pressure readings from personal weather stations along the coast that seem to be reliable that suggest the central pressure is in the vicinity of 996 millibars which is much lower uh, than this morning and lower than many of the model forecasts at this time. So this is uh, definitely developing quite well relative to the spectrum of expectations that we had going into today. And as promised on Thursday, we have a few more answers now that we have something that is not a complete mess. We have a defined center of circulation that can now be tracked on satellite imagery, on surface observations, and in recon data. So we're now going to watch this emerge off the coast of the Dominican Republic and through the Turks and Caicos Islands and into the Bahamas over the next day or two and uh, we're talking about a storm that is now gaining some intensity and so it's possible that there is a greater wind and storm surge threat uh, from this storm now for this chain of islands which are of co course low-lying and this very strong long easterly fetch of wind on the north side is quite stiff and could push ocean water into flood prone areas so that's going to be a number one concern here along with the potential for winds that could approach hurricane force uh, if this intensifies a bit further after it emerges. Uh, there will be some impediments though. This is not likely to explode and intensify beyond say maybe a Cat 1 hurricane while it's in the Bahamas and the reason we think this is because there will be some shear present. We've been talking about this for a few days now. If we look at the water vapor satellite imagery, this often shows us quite well the upper level flow and what you can see as a distinct feature here is the expanding outflow radially outward away from Isaias and all that thunderstorm activity as the storm strengthens is shoving this outflow outward. And so this forms the clockwise circulating outflow high over the storm. And we also have some northeast flow here over Florida and north of the Bahamas. And this is kind of outlining the back flank of an upper level trough that kind of does something like this, where we have southwest flow merging with the outflow and the northeast flow behind. This trough here is what is likely to impose at least some shear and kind of already is as the storm plows through this part of uh, the, uh, the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos over the next couple of days. Now, we have talked about how a stronger Asias is better equipped to survive or combat the shear because some of this outflow is able to push against that trough and kind of keep it at bay as the storm encroaches on this region. Um, however, there are a couple things going on here. One is that while it may push the trough out of the way, the general stress on the upper levels of Asias is still likely to be out of at least the southerly direction if not the southwesterly direction and that's because if you actually look at the outline of the outflow high it's really about to form an oblong ellipse like this and this oblong ellipse of clockwise circulating air is not likely to change orientation very much over the next couple of days. This trough uh, over the Bahamas right now continues to try to squish this western side of the outflow ridge so that the storm is always going to be on the western side of this ridge. It's going to continue to move away from the center of the ellipse I've just drawn because of the pressure applied by this trough. So we're going to continue to have at least southerly or southwesterly upper level flow over the system. And we can see this in the GFS model fields going out to Saturday morning where now the storm has made it to the northern Bahamas, but you can see that its outflow ridge continues to be offset from the storm. And so we have this southwesterly flow aloft. And uh, not only this, but the TC cannot protect itself fully from this type of shear because the cirrus outflow that we see expanding on satellite imagery only exists at the most upper levels of the atmosphere, but not really in the middle levels of the atmosphere. And if we look at some of the soundings averaged around the vortex, during the next couple of days, we'll see the low level flow is out of the east and the upper level flow is out of the south, but it's out of the south all the way down to even 350-400 millibars. And if 
if we go out a couple more days, you'll see that this shearing layer is quite deep. The TC outflow mostly exists up here, but we even get a lot of shear down in the middle levels of the atmosphere where these wind barbs are turning with height. That indicates that the shear is rather robust and difficult to just shrug off by a storm like this, even if Asias gains some strength during the next couple of days. And so when we see forecasts like uh, we've seen from the European model and the GFS that show the storm struggling in the Bahamas, these are believable forecasts. And so we do expect some impediment to occur. And this is the Euro showing uh, the same kind of thing here. Friday morning, we have a strengthening storm. It's even stronger by 12Z Saturday, so Saturday morning, but at this point, the shear becomes a maximum. And from this point forward, the storm actually weakens significantly near the eastern coast of Florida on the model. And so this is something that is a very realistic scenario. We're not expecting the storm to really explode here, but we could still be dealing with a hurricane threat to the chain of islands. And uh, depending on how close this gets to Florida, we could even be talking about strong wind on the east coast of Florida as well. The good news for Florida is that a track toward Florida is more likely when the storm is weak, less likely when the storm is strong, as uh, that wind is more out of the east at the low levels, but out of the southwest at the upper levels. And so a stronger storm will feel that upper level flow more, and that would tend to steer it away from Florida more often than not. For now, that seems to be the case in most of the model forecasts. The reason the Euro gets so close to Florida is precisely because it's weakening during that time. That doesn't mean it can't still bring impacts. You can see it's quite a ball of red here on the model. So we could still be talking about tropical storm impacts, and we do have watches now for southeastern Florida. So that is likely to happen uh, by the time we get to Saturday night and Sunday. Now, what about after this? As this begins to turn up, we're talking about a, a, a ridge that is now weakening and allowing the storm to turn toward the north, whether that's over Florida or just east of Florida. Kind of remains to be seen here, uh, but we do have now concerns for points farther north along the U.S. eastern seaboard. Now, a lot of this will hinge on, again, the shear forecast, at least in terms of the intensity of the storm. If we look at the GFS here, this is again 12Z Saturday, so again we have the strong shearing flow at that time. But what happens now is we have a big trough over the plains that is moving in to try to pick the storm up and curve it up either over or just east of the U.S. And as that happens, we're going to change the shearing flow such that the storm is now moving more northward. So the low level flow has become more aligned with the southerly or southwesterly upper level flow. And when those two flows are aligned, the shear is a bit less. So the shear starts to go down after this gets uh, away from southeast Florida and the northern Bahamas. In addition, we have this big trough coming in the development of a big southwesterly jet, which we can see better on the uh, eastern seaboard map here by Monday morning, the storm is approaching the Carolinas on the model, and we have this big jet developing to its west. Now, because this is four days out, the details of how this jet interacts with the TC are still a little bit murky, but if the jet develops in a way that is favorable uh, to help the TC with strong upper-level divergence near the entrance region of that jet, then this could be a situation that favors an intensifying hurricane moving up the eastern seaboard, whether that's offshore or onshore into the Carolinas, and indeed perhaps even on into the mid-Atlantic and New England. This is something we're going to have to watch very closely over the coming days. And again, if, if you're living along the corridor of the U.S., uh, this is the kind of track where really either everyone or nobody could be affected depending on whether it's a track like this or whether it's a track 200 miles farther east and then nobody gets anything. This could be a nail biter in terms of figuring out who gets what impacts. So just have a plan just in case. Uh, we're still really not sure, but the tracks have not looked uh, promising in terms of avoiding the U.S. And so it looks like impacts are certainly on the table here. I want to point out right now that you'll see a lot of plots like this one, the so-called spaghetti model plots that show a bunch of model solutions for the hurricane. I provide this particular plot on my website, and I just want to make it clear that this data is provided for those who know how to use it. If you don't know how to actually use it properly, please do not make decisions and assumptions based on this graphic. In this particular graphic for Asias right now, these lines are very tightly clustered together. This implies to you, the viewer, that there is strong confidence that the storm will track east of Florida and will track over North Carolina. 
This is not a valid assumption to make. Do not use this graphic this way. The uncertainty in the forecast is much larger than this graphic implies. I just want to make it clear that this warning up here is here for a reason. Please consult the National Hurricane Center forecast and what your local NWS office has to say. And keep in mind, things change in the tropics. We've seen day three, day four, day five forecasts change a lot before and in recent history too. So don't take this for granted. We're gonna have to track this closely as again, you can see this track angle, kind of a nail biter for the entire Eastern seaboard. So this is far from, far from written in stone. So just keep a close, uh, a close consideration of those points as we go forward. This is the official forecast as it stands. And as we talked about here on the most recent model guidance, a track just east of Florida is the current consensus with something really close to the Eastern seaboard. The hurricane center does have some mild strengthening into a hurricane in the Bahamas where tropical storm warnings are in effect and we may see hurricane watches or warnings soon. Tropical storm watch for Southeastern Florida. And uh, they have a flat intensity. That is they keep it at uh, a Cat 1 hurricane with winds of about 75 miles per hour for this entire journey toward the Carolinas on this particular forecast. As I mentioned, there might be a chance that this strengthens more on its way north if it's healthy coming out of this region of the Bahamas. Still stay tuned on that, but just be aware this could be a fairly significant storm as it comes up the coast if things go right for the storm. So keep an eye on this forecast. We will have changes. Expect them. That's the nature of the beast. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.